I grew up with a liberal family. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that label really means, <laughs> but I felt like they were liberal, as in they let me do whatever I want to do. Uh, they actually encouraged me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and since we were kids, I remember the first experiences like of me saying, yeah, I guess my family is not like strict, mm -hmm. uh, was when we started sneaking the hookah to the basement and smoking it there. Mm -hmm. And then my dad found out, and instead of punishing us, he told us, you can just ask me for it, and I can maybe join you guys. <laughs> so after that point, we actually stopped smoking that much, because it was more about the sneaky part of it, more mm -hmm. than the enjoying the smoking. Yeah. So that, that was one of the points I realized something. And then, mm -hmm. uh, in education and school, one of the things that I also noticed was that... Um, Religion was something important for a lot of kids, and it wasn't for me. Um, my parents were both communists when they were teenagers, so they didn't really believe in religion in the first place. Mm -hmm. My mom later did believe, but she's not practicing, so that's also something else she's uh, in conflict with, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I never felt the need to be religious in school. I felt that in comparison to my peers. Mm -hmm. um, and then I suddenly got interested in high school and learning about it and learning its history. That was one point where I was like, I'm going to try to see something else other than what my parents are doing. So I started studying religion. And usually I studied religion's history more than the teachings of the religion. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't study like... Uh, religious books, I would study history books about religions. I, I was interested in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that was, I think, one of the things that I tried to find something else away from my from what my parents were interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and then, even when my father taught me in school, he taught me one economics class. Mm -hmm. um, he he would usually talk about government policies that would help. Um, close the disadvantage between the poor and the rich, the gap, um, how tax uh, can help redistribute income. And then I remember being one of the people, but like, that doesn't make any sense if someone worked for their money, don't they deserve it? Why do other people get their money? I'm not convinced by that anymore, <laughs> but that was something I wanted to see, like to challenge what my parents have taught me. Mm -hmm. uh, in all those years, because they both have come from um, basic back from a basic background, mm -hmm. um, and they found something in the communist movement that allowed them to get free education, mm -hmm. um, and also it was a form of resistance for a lot of youth mm -hmm. uh, protests, and it also represented something that going against the mainstream, which is the U.S. and Israel at that point, it still mm -hmm. is. Um, but then my parents slowly changed to become, as they started becoming successful, they left the communist ideals in terms of economics, but I think mm -hmm. they still value some of... Uh, the social idea. Yeah, yeah, how society works together to help um, everyone in it, everyone be represented or mm -hmm. um, looked out for. So that's one thing. And then... Um, I came to Erlum, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I don't know. I guess there were there was a lot of new ideas. I was learning new things every day, mm -hmm. and some of them I was like I was taken aback, like like what's liberalism? What's concern? Like I wasn't convinced by these ideas in the first place that you need to label them in the first place, like mm -hmm. label people as liberal or conservative. Mm -hmm. Um, because we, no one believes a set of ideas and that's it. There's always different right. things for yeah, each person. Yeah, constructs rather than... Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I started slowly learning about things that I wasn't introduced to and things I was already introduced to. So, mm -hmm. something big that I wanted to learn about was my home country, mm -hmm. Palestine and Israel, and the conflict, because we don't get that sort of education back home because it's simply not allowed um, so I was interested in that and there I was even getting introduced to new ideas 
about how you know liberals who want to advance your cause but they start using their own power to advance it rather than using your own vi voice so even liberalism I was like there's oppression as well mm. it's not limited to one field so um, could you further explain that like how they use their the way in rhetoric? yeah so let's say I'm in a group for Palest Palestinian rights and mm -hmm. I am a Palestinian there and I'm talking about my experience mm -hmm. and then there's other members in the group who are not Palestinian and they're learning but they're mm -hmm. also advocating for Palestinian rights and they're with us in the cause but then they sometimes feel entitled to their opinions as if the Palestinians in the group don't matter or they don't need to be listened to mm -hmm. um, so even in liberalism yes you're advocating for a cause but you're also making yourself powerful within that cause. Like, I am a figure, I am this, and people need to listen to me. Somehow so, it's about, like, imposing um, yeah, 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 the yeah. democracy yeah. onto other people. Yeah, exactly. It was this liberal idea of, like, let's, like, let's make the world a better place. Mm. Um, but I'm going to do it because, like, I'm the white savior. <laughs> They're mm. just, they just need my help, basically. Yeah. So that was something I started noticing at Erlam. Mm. Um, and then there were ideas that I was never really introduced to or really thought about. Sexism, I think, was mm. one of the first th things that I, I want to say I did think about it when like you see people catcalling in the street or something like that. Yeah. Or that if you're a guy and you act in a feminine way, you're going to get uh, punished or mm. um, not really punished, but at least ostracized in some way. Well, for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not specifically by just the parents, by society as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the things that I always like noticed, I guess. But here at Erlum, you start thinking about like everyday things, like simple things, like walking down the street is a whole different process. It could be a whole different process on who it is looking at you as you're walking. Mm -hmm. um, gender, like you perform it. It's not really something you're born with, like. There's sex and like I've never heard of these different ideas. Um, yeah, and then um, sexuality is another thing. Um, homophobia, all of these things that I, I never because I didn't know there was such thing as a gay person. I, I started to learn about it in high school, but it was more of like, you doctrine. know, a curse. Like not doctrine, but like as if you're a sick person, kind of. So. Um, it wasn't something, and we didn't see anyone like, oh, this guy's gay, because everyone's in the closet still. So that was another thing, like, that it, you don't even have to think about it, because mm -hmm. you're privileged enough to not have to think about it. But when you come, when I came here to Erlam, I noticed that because there are people from all over the world and there's different struggles, they, they challenge you in a positive way um, to put yourself in their shoe and try to see how what you're going through is related to them because at the end you're still fighting the same like structures but from this different perspectives and different angles yeah um, I think yeah. like particularly that transition to make your experience even though you are a privileged person how to relate your own experience to their experience is so hard mm. when when was that time came to you um, Hmm. I think there were mul multiple experiences that pushed me to like think beyond what I experienced because growing up you think like your own conflict whether it's Vietnam how things are there whether it's Palestine how things are there you think this is the whole world the world revolves around that conflict mm -hmm. um, that early my you know, Palestine was just another place. But uh, growing up, I thought this is the, the, you know, this is the Holy Land. It's mm. occupied. People notice it. Here, you start saying, uh, I guess there are other problems that are just as big, uh, maybe even deeper in history, like sexism, for example. Mm. Um, it's as if it's ingrained in our minds almost. Um, so I think a point was, you know, little conflicts with either friends or um, like saying certain things and then someone challenging me on those ideas whether it was in the classroom or even outside. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's when I started saying 
I need to read more. I need to push myself more to understand more than who I am, but also others, because that way mm -hmm. the world doesn't become just you. The world be it becomes you're exploring the world rather than, I don't know. Yeah, it, it just shows that there are different perspectives and different lives everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and even to define who you are, it also depends on the, the framework of the world that you can see. Right? Yeah, yeah. You have to define yourself up against some background. Exactly, That's why yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So, one experience, one, I'll give you two specific examples that I went through here. Mm. Um, so, when I first came here, um, um, I guess while joking with people from our country, I would say something that isn't politically correct. Mm. And I would say about that about different groups of people on campus and then they would tell me like why but why do you say that and then we would start discussing and then um, I started realizing how what I'm saying although it's just a joke it's more than just a joke it's reinforcing certain stereotypes and um, ignoring the actual suffering that actual people go through um, yeah and then the second experience was um, seeing uh, some of my female friends mm -hmm. slowly like exploring different like um, sexualities that I haven't been exposed to mm -hmm. and then how difficult that is for them whether it's by action of like changing a hairstyle or by just acknowledging those beliefs that you have mm -hmm. or those interests that you have um, how hard that stage is for um, people that's when I realized that this is this isn't normal like the fact that you need to come into terms with your sexuality like to like that there's certain rules as if and if you go past them your life is suddenly ruined or like not ruined but changed forever the way the people are gonna look at you mm. and the way people are gonna perceive you or think about you or stereotype you just because you said actually I don't like um, girls I like boys or I don't like boys I actually like girls like mm -hmm. something like that like just because you decided to acknowledge that society is going to look at you differently and mm -hmm. it's going to treat you differently and that mm -hmm. transition I think a lot of it a lot of people go through it through college and that's how it pushed me to um, understand that because I've never seen it before yeah to acknowledge that if you cross that boundary, the society will treat you differently. Like that acknowledgement is empowering or intimidating. Hmm. I think it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of like social constructs are intimidating because they're basically the rules and you don't break them. Um, and I think we get exposed to that Sorry. in different ways, um, either through like an education system that disciplines you and tells you to act in a certain way. You sit in a classroom, you you stay quiet until the teacher tells you to talk. Um, if you're a girl, you dress differently from guys you have to. It's, it's just everything is there as rules in school and you have to follow them. And then suddenly you come to college and half of those rules disappear. So you start exploring yourself rather than just going by the rules. And then you see the effect of that. Um, from from simple things like uh, I don't know like maybe less at Erlum changing those habits gives like you get less judgment but other places being a girl and simply walking up the street and sitting in a certain way and smoking a cigarette will make people look at you in a different way than you